Do you ever wonder why some people get the big promotions and the big projects, and why others don't, even when you have equally qualified and talented individuals? Let's find out today a little bit more about what might make the difference and how we can figure it out at our organization. Hello, this is Joe Kwan, the Connection Counselor, and welcome to Executive Tune-Up. Today, we're going to find out a little bit about reading between the lines to see where some information about what it really takes to thrive and get promoted in an organization may actually be sitting in plain sight. So today, drawing some inspiration from my own organization, KPMG, on July 6th, we named a new management team. And I'll read um, the uh, a snippet of the announcement or press release, which you can all see uh, publicly. It's not secret information. Um, and then we'll dissect that a little bit to see where there may actually be some clues or leads as to why certain people were selected. So um, the message went out from Paul Knopp, who is the chair and CEO, and his so-called right hand, Laura Nowinski, who is the deputy chair and COO. And I'll read the message, uh, a snippet from the message. This part came from uh, Laura, uh, and I found um, her portion especially illuminating. So Laura said, each of the leaders Paul and I selected for the management team has a long and proven track record of success. They make up a diverse team that will embrace change, focus intensely on quality and excellence, build strong teams, and live our values every day. They are highly regarded partners who embody the skills, experience, and personal attributes that will lead our firm forward. So sounds like a typical corporate message, right? No one would argue with any of the things uh, in Laura's message. Someone might even think, well, she didn't even really write that. The press person wrote that. Um, let's take a closer look because I think there's actually a lot of useful information in this very short paragraph by Laura. So first, it says, Paul and I selected, right? So what that says to me is who's actually making the final decision? The number one decision makers are Paul and Laura, right? They have to sign off ultimately on the management team. So what that says to me is if you're applying for a position, whether it's at the lofty management team position or just a, the next promotion in your level, who's going to be the number one decision maker to decide, yes, you get to go through versus someone else. And if you don't know who that person is, you have a problem. If you do know who that person is, but they don't know you, again, you have a problem. So it's really important to understand who that number one decision maker or makers are, and also their relationship with you, or even if you can't or wouldn't have a direct relationship, their sort of virtual feeling about you or how others would be able to represent you to them. So that's point number one. Next, Laura said they have a long and proven track record. Right? What, what does that mean? Why would that matter? Well, they have a history of accomplishment right? that resonates with the people making those choices, which predicts a future of the same. Right? So the position that they are being put into or put forth for uh, requires a certain sort of ability to do something, and they haven't done it before. right? This is the first time for them going into this sort of management position typically. So how do you predict that? Well, uh, with without actual exact experience, you look at the history of their accomplishment, which will predict the future of similar type accomplishments. So that's something else that you would look at for yourself. What is your track record, right? How long is it? And how proven is it, right? Is it something that someone could just say, oh, you got lucky? Or does it really show that you are ready for the next level and have what it takes? Next, diverse team 
right? They use the words diverse team and embrace change. So what that says to me is they are looking at the qualities that they want of the people that are being selected, right? That they're a, a diverse thinking or type person and that also uh, in behaviorally that they embrace change. It's what it says to me is part of the thought process in the selection is not old guard. We want new guard. We want people with new thinking. Um, and generally this happens when an organization is trying to shake things up, um, be more innovative and have more change. There's nothing right or wrong with that specifically. In some organizations, they may be looking for more stability, uh, more status quo and uh, making things, um, shoring things up. So they don't want someone who's going to come in and just toss everything, all the cards up in the air and reformulate things. They want someone who has institutional knowledge, who's going to do things very traditionally, because at that moment in time, that's the right thing for the organization. So whether you agree with it or not, um, what those words tell me is those are certain qualities that they were looking for in these individuals. And if you have these qualities and, and this way of thinking and going about things, it would have been to your benefit. Then we talk about focusing on what? Laura says quality and excellence, building strong teams, and living our values every day. Now, having been in the organization for 15 years, I just had my 15 year uh, anniversary, I've heard these phrases over and over again. And it's interesting to me that these specific ones made it into the press release, right? We do as a business, it's imperative that we have the highest quality and excellence. We're you know very competitive against the rest of the big four and, and the organizations that are sort of biting at our heels. Um, in addition, it's about building strong teams because nothing really gets done in our organization if it's just individual contributors. Uh, teamwork is essential. And we're at this moment where there is a huge focus on living our values every day. Um, with everything that's going on, with the pandemic, um, it really makes a difference how people respond with their values because you can't write a manual for emergencies, but if you have values and you have people who live those values, it can help you respond to various situations. So in this sort of time of uncertainty and all the things that are going on, I believe it was really important to look and assess people based on their values, not just on their accomplishments. Uh, another detail in Laura's message is that they were highly regarded partners. Right. So what is what does that mean? So that means that um, other people, right, who were weighing in on this had to buy in. It wasn't just Laura and Paul sitting in a room, you know, rolling a dice or, you know, tic-tac-toe or somehow figuring out some random way who to pick. They were receiving sort of information from other people who had worked with them uh, and highly regarded them in terms of the way that, that they work. So you need to get buy-in from other people as well. So it's not just the people in the room per se who are deciding, but who are the other people that those people are going to draw input from and say, hey, how does Joe deal with conflict, right? How does he deal with stress? What are your partners going to most likely respond when they get asked that question? And tough questions because for, you know, the higher you go up and the more responsibility you get, um, the tougher they're going to want you to be in terms of being able to withstand pressure, uh, stress, and difficulty. That's somewhat inevitable um, as you go into the more higher up positions. Also, this also means no one sank their ship, right? They're highly regarded. So there weren't anyone or a lot of people saying, mm, I'm not so sure about him, or I'm not so sure about her because they did X, Y, and Z. So they had a clean bill of sort of relationship or corporate health uh, in terms of the partners that they work with. Everyone had at least, you know, only good things or no bad things to say about them uh, when they were asked. Um, another point is the language that Laura used saying that they will lead our firm forward, right? So what does that say to me? That says to me that um, it's very future looking in terms of where we are going 
uh, and where we want to be, not where we've been, right? It's not just about replicating what's already happened. It's about the ability, um, having the trust of the management that you will contribute now to the management team to continue to lead us forward to where we want to go. And so what that says to me is executive presence, right? They want people with executive presence who really understand and inspire confidence that they will be able to lead forward to where we need to be. Well, thanks so much for joining us for this first executive tune-up. Hope this has been useful to you. And if you have any comments or additional ideas, we'd love to hear from you in the comments. So my name is Joe Kwan, the Connection Counselor, and thanks for joining Executive Tune-Up. To do your best, you have to be your best. So remember to tune in to tune up.